Hi there. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to get an ESP32 module to post an HTTP request to a server running on the same local Wi-Fi network and get responses. You'll see how this can be applied to practical applications like providing access control to your home or building using an ESP32 controller, a local server, and a Wi-Fi network. In fact, that's pretty much what the example in this video is targeting. So I'll jump straight to the demo in a second so you can see what it does first. And then I'll walk through the Python HTTP server code that runs on a local PC or would even run it on a Raspberry Pi. And then the C code for the ESP32 itself. I think you'll be impressed at what you can accomplish with a small amount of, of code. And as usual, I'll post a link to all the code used in this demonstration in the description for the video. I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel if you enjoy watching these types of videos. Now, let's see the demo working. First, I have Python code that I'll start running on my PC that creates a web server that the ESP32 module will send requests to. Let's run the Python code. And the server is running and ready for action now. And now we go to the Arduino IDE where I've got C code for the ESP32 controller and have already compiled and uploaded to the ESP32. Through the serial interface, I'll enter an unauthorized name and the ESP32 sends the name as part of an HTTP request and waits for a response from our server. Okay, it gets a response along with an indication the access is denied. Now we'll enter an authorized name and we get a uh, more positive message in response. Okay, we can try out one more name and then jump into the Python code for the server running on the PC. So for the Python server code, we'll need to import some HTTP TTP server library elements. Then we will need to define our host name, which is the IP address of the computer the server is running on. You can get that IP address on Windows using the ipconfig command in the command prompt or find it under settings. We'll also define the server port we'll use. In this case, 8080. Now we get to the HTTP request handler code itself, where we accept the postcode requests only. So the ESP32 will send a post command that includes data that gets decoded. And the handler will first send an OK response to indicate the request is good. That's what the value 200 signifies in the send response instruction. Next, we'll pass along a message to go along with the response. In our example, we respond with the equivalent of an access granted message in response to one particular data payload. I've hard coded Tinker Foundry for the purpose of this example, but you can imagine we could search a local database for a list of authorized names. In all other cases, we respond with a message that is the equivalent of access denied. And of course, in the main line of the code, we initialize the web server itself. Next, let's walk through the ESP32 code. We start off with the header files for an ESP32 device that includes Wi-Fi.h and HTTP client.h. We'll then set up the Wi-Fi network name and password. We'll also set up the server name we will connect to. This corresponds to the IP address of the server computer as we discussed in the Python code walkthrough. We also have the uh, port number we specified. Remember, we're using port 8080 in this example. 
Please take note we need to include the forward slash at the end, a small thing but easy to overlook and waste lots of time tracking down. And next we have the setup function where we'll set up the serial interface and the Wi-Fi connection. So far this has been pretty standard stuff we've mostly covered before in our ESP32 videos and is available pretty much anywhere for a reference. Now for the main loop. The heart of this code is taken from previous examples we've looked at. It waits for input over the serial interface, which we provided by typing um, on our keyboard. You can imagine this could be replaced with code to scan an our uh, FID card that people would carry with them. Upon receiving input, the code checks that uh, the Wi-Fi is connected and then um, starts the HTTP request to the server. It forms a request that includes the serial input string itself and issues the request. The code then checks the server response code for a good value. A positive value response code indicates the request was received and is good, while a negative value response indicates a problem. The code will indicate whether a response was good or bad. And next, we extract the message that was included in the server response through http.getString and then we'll print it out. That's the part of the server response that indicated access granted or denied. And that's it for the quick run through of the code. Again, this will all be available for reference through a link in the description below. For an actual building access system, we could make the ESP32 control actuators to lock or unlock doors, for example. We'd also likely use an RFID card reader or perhaps a keypad where people can enter unique PIN numbers or something similar. And of course, we would program the server to use a proper database to store and retrieve the unique codes to grant access. I'm sure we could think of lots of other applications that could build on this example as well. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and that it's got you thinking of your own applications. Please do subscribe to the channel and maybe share some ideas you've got in the comments. Until next time, have fun tinkering.